so we come to the last two topics the, the next topic is very interesting and i want you to pay attention how do you now get the full slope deflection equation including chord rotation so first we'll understand what's the meaning of chord rotation if i have a simply supported beam and one of the supports goes down due to settlement of soil let us say what happens will you get any curvature any bending moment in the beam i'm asking you a question simply supported beam there's a settlement one support goes down what will happen to the beam you certainly have a displacement response do you also have a force response do you have support reactions forming do you have bending moment coming in do you have shear forces what's the answer the original beam was horizontal straight line one support goes down will not the deflected shape also be a straight line or will it be curved if it's curved there is a change in curvature you will get bending moment if it's straight it's a rigid body movement no problem so will it be straight or will it be curved and don't bring in self weight and all in the picture just due to settlement any answers 17 colleges someone should answer so the answer is you just have a rigid body movement the settlement is very small okay the beam is usually in the order of several meters the settlement is in the order of few mm so it's a very small movement nothing will happen no change in curvature it will be remaining straight and you will have no bending moments no shear forces you will have a deflection that's all but if one end is fixed if you have a propped cantilever what happens let's see so either the left end a is fixed or the right end b is fixed doesn't matter and let's say you have a settlement of b so b goes down by delta b a b goes down to b dash now that rotation of the center line of ab which is also referred to as a chord is called chord rotation okay that straight line ab the, the will now take the shape a b dash you have a clockwise chord rotation which is referred to as phi ab and uh, since the change in angle is very small sin theta is equal to theta approximately so you say it is simply delta ba by l is it clear that's the you can either say differential settlement or you can say chord rotation both are accepted either your unknown is delta known or unknown is delta ba or it's phi ab phi ab or phi ba both both sides rotate but unlike the previous case where you had a simply supported beam here you have a, a curvature why do you have a curvature because end a is fixed or end b is fixed so the slope there at the point of fixity has to be zero so the deflected shape will not be a straight line it will be curved it will be curved like this can you try it for the other beam and it will be curved like this very interesting in the left span theta a is zero theta b can have any value in the right span theta a can have any value but theta b is zero it has to have the shape now these shapes do they look familiar have you seen these shapes before so well, first question there is a change in curvature something that was initially straight has now become bent in both these examples which means there is a bending moment generated for the beam which means there will be 
the bending moment is going to change because at the hinge support, the bending moment is zero. And most probably, it's going to be a linear variation, which means you'll have a constant shear, which means you'll have support reaction. Can we find a relationship between the deflection, which is usually known, you know that the beam goes down by 10 mm or 5 mm, 14 mm. Can we find out how many, how much bending moment in support reaction do you have? That's the point. You can. It's not difficult. What do you need to do? You need to first look at these pictures, see them and remind yourself where you've seen these pictures before. Look at the deflected shape only. Are you not reminded of a cantilever behavior? Let's see. Let's take AB and with fixed year day and AB with cantilever. Okay. Now, that deflected shape looks like this. No difference. It's actually I've copied the same picture below. Hmm? So the variation bending moment is exactly the same. Where will you get such shapes? What loading will cause such movement? Obviously, a concentrated load applied at the free end. For the span on the left, you should apply the concentrated load at B. For span at the right, you should apply it A and you should apply it acting upwards. Right? That's all. So you, if you can get your support reaction, they're very simple. You have a constant shear force P in both the beams and you have a moment at the fixed end which is P into L. The same reaction. So if you draw a free body, the free body of what we did on the top will be the same as the free body at the bottom. So you have the answers already. So let's say it is some P, then there is a relationship between P and delta, you know that. I hope you have studied this, you can prove this. In a well-proportioned P, the deflection caused at the free end due to a constant load applied at the free end, P, is going to be PL cubed by 3EI if you ignore shear deformation. We know that. Very well. PL cube by 3. So you know everything. This knowledge you now superimpose onto the support settlement problem. And you will find you can put P. You have a downward reaction there. And you have support reactions like that. P and P by L. Similarly, you have an upward reaction at the left support A and downward reaction at B. Right? And we also know the relationship between P and delta. P is 3i delta by L cube. And the moment is P into L. So it's 3i delta by L squared. And if I want to write it in terms of phi, in terms of uh, the chord rotation, it is 3i by L into phi. Very easy. The whole thing looks beautiful and familiar. What's the moral of the story? Whenever I have in a propped cantilever a clockwise chord rotation, at the fixed end I will get an anti clockwise bending moment. You see, in both cases, at the fixed end I get an anti clockwise moment. And if the chord rotation is clockwise and equal to phi, the anti-clockwise fixed end moment is symmetric. Remember this. Now let's take another case where both ends are fixed. Okay, so we need not draw two pictures, one picture. A, B, both ends are fixed. Let's say B goes down, you have a same clockwise chord rotation of delta by L clockwise. What's the deflected shape? Can you try drawing the deflected shape? Now the shape you draw will have a reverse curvature because slope at A must be 0 and slope at B must also be 0. 
and you will have a point of contraflexure at the mid span C. You have to draw something like this as is it, right. And you can use an intuitive logic and say that the deflection at C must be half of delta, agree? That makes our life easy. Once you do that, you can separate out the two beams and analyze them as two separate cantilevers because there is no shear transfer at C. Two cantilevers, imagine I apply a load P and I get a deflection delta B A by 2. I know the relationship now. What is the relationship? First, I know the bending moments are P L by 2 and I know the relation between P and delta. Same. PLQ by 3, I only now I put L by 2 and I put delta by 2. So I end up with a moment PL by 2, which is now 6 EI by L squared into delta. This understanding I now impose on my fixed fixed beam subjected to a support settlement, and I realize that if I have a differential settlement of delta. Then I get moments 6 EI by L squared at the two ends, putting it in terms of the chord rotation. If I have a clockwise chord rotation of phi, I end up with a fixed end moment 6 EI by L into phi with the opposite direction to the chord rotation. So that is the model you have here. If in a fixed fixed beam I have a clockwise chord rotation phi, I end up with an anti-clockwise fixed end moment 6 EI phi by L. So remember in propped cantilever, it is 3 EI by L on the fixed end only. In a fixed fixed beam, it is 6 EI by L times the chord rotation at both ends. So if you have clockwise chord rotation, you have anti-clockwise. Now this is interesting. Those numbers 3 and 6. Are they related to the stiffness measures? I am now summarizing both the diagrams here. Okay. Prop cantilever on top, fixed fixed beam at the bottom, both subject to a clockwise rotation delta by L. You have a fixed end moment 3 EI by L and reactions as shown in the prop cantilever, and you have two, two moments 6 EI by L at the bottom. This 3 EI by L does it not ring a bell? Let us look at flexural stiffness where I have a flexural rotation theta. You remember the stiffness measures 3 EI by L? So the 3 that you see on, on due to flexural rotation and the 3 that you see due to chord rotation, there must be something similar. No? Not the clockwise rotation at B, I know the stiffness is 4 EI by L at this end and 2 EI by L at this end. By the way, when we say stiffness, we refer to per unit rotation. So, if theta is 1, the bending moment is 4 EI by L at one end and 2 EI by L at the other end. But if I have a clockwise rotation at the other end, A, I have 4 EI by L here and 2 EI by L. And when I add up 2 EI more EI by L, I end up with 6 EI by L. So, is there some way I can argue that these two are similar, that there is some equivalence between a chord rotation and a flexural rotation? Because my understanding will improve. There is a proof, and I am going to give you that proof. It is not a coincidence, and the proof is this. Let us take a look at this. Okay. Now, what we will do is we will do a clever thing. We will take the beam in the inclined position, but with the fixity at A also rotated by the same degree as the chord rotation. I am beginning with this picture on the right side, okay. And I want to do something to this to give me back this curved shape. What do, what should I do to get me this curved shape? I have to impose a rotational slip at A, which is anti-clockwise to the chord rotation. Let me do that. So, I am imposing a rotational slip like that. If I do that, what is the deflected shape? Deflected shape is like that. 
and the moment I do that, I get a support reaction whose magnitude will be 3i by L into 5. There you see psi dagger. It's a powerful argument which tells you that the chord rotation is equivalent to a flexural rotation with the opposite direction. The stiffnesses are the same. Very interesting. Can we do the same proof for this fixed fixed beam? Yes, we can. How do we do it? Well, we take the beam in the inclined position. Then we have to do it in two stages. First, let's have a rotational slip at A. Okay, the moment you do that, what are the moments you get at the two ends? You get 4 EI by L on one side and 2 EI by L on the other side, both anti clockwise. Then we do a superposition. We'll take the same beam and now we'll do a rotational slip at B. Again, you'll get 4 EI by L at B now and 2 EI by L at A now. Now, the picture you have at the left hand side is actually a superposition of both these pictures. So, the moment should add up, and that is what you get. This 4 EI by L plus 2 EI by L will give you 6 EI by L. This 2 EI by L plus 4 EI by L will give you 6 EI by L. So, what is the proof we have established? Any chord rotation at a fixed end support phi can be visualized as producing the same response as a rotational slip with opposite direction theta equal to minus phi at that fixed end. So, wherever we have a fixed end, you can use this logic. You will get the same answer. So, if you have two fixed ends, you are going to play at both two. Very interesting proof. Now, let us derive the slope deflection. Actually, in most textbooks, uh, we begin with this. Derivation. We didn't do that. We went slowly. We said first rotation. So, without chord, this was a picture, and these were the slope deflection equations. You remember? Now let's look at with chord rotation. So we deliberately bring deflections of supports, which are not equal. So this is called differential support settlement. And again, let's have a clockwise chord rotation. So we're assuming that. Support B settles more than support A. Delta B is more than delta A. Rotation is defined as delta B minus delta A divided by the span. Is it clear? Supposing both supports go down the same, then you don't have a chord rotation. If only one goes down, you got a chord rotation. If both go down but not equally, you have differential settlement, you have chord rotation. The moment you have chord rotation, your slope deflection equations will be the same as without chord rotation with an additional term. What is that additional term? That additional term is minus 6 EI by L into 5. You need not write AB because it's applying it. B A and AB are similar. Is it clear? Why minus? Because of the equivalent free proof. The clockwise chord rotation is equivalent to a anti clockwise flexural rotation. And this is how students memorize the slope deflection equation. And they un unfortunately use this equation even when there is no chord rotation. Why waste time? If there is no chord rotation, use this equation. If there is chord rotation, use this equation. Bring in minus 6 Ei by L phi term only when you have a chord rotation. And in case, so you can also write it cleverly in this matrix form. Where the same 4, 2 is written, but your net rotation is theta a minus 5. These are the same equation 4 times theta a, okay, plus 2 times theta b, that's this first part, minus 2 times 5, minus 4 times 5 will add up to minus 6 times. So, this is a powerful matrix, we will study it later. That this is nothing but the stiffness matrix for that element. Okay, that comes later. But you can see the powerful equivalent. Remember, these numbers 4 and 2 are valid only if the beam is prismatic. Let's say beam is tapered. You'll have some other number. What those numbers are, you can derive. But right now, we are assuming the beams are prismatic. 